Have you ever spent time with a firefighter? Maybe you went to a restaurant or a movie, or rode a bus or a train. When the rest of us are looking for the way in, firefighters are always looking for the way out, the exits. It's a safety thing. More important than entering a building is the ability to exit, to go in peace. In today's gospel, we, did, we meet a man who has spent his whole life looking for the exit. He's not a firefighter. It's not entirely clear just what Simeon is. The gospel simply says that he was a righteous and devout person looking for the consolation of Israel. I think that means that Simeon was looking for the Messiah and couldn't leave this life until he saw him. He couldn't be at peace. Pastor Kim is going to say much more about that in today's sermon. So hold that thought for a moment. I want to begin by reminding you of the three most important words we say in worship. What are they? Well, we say a lot of important words in worship. Things like, we confess our sins. That's important. We declare our faith in the words of the creed. That's important. We boldly pray as Jesus taught our Father in heaven. That's important. And we proclaim that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. But the three most important words might be the most obvious and at the same time the most overlooked words of all. Go in peace like the bright red exit sign that's always there, but seldom seen. Those three little words remind us why we entered to worship in the first place. The world can be a scary place. Safe one minute, dangerous the next. Nothing in life is guaranteed. But God's promises to love and care for us through it all. Like Simeon, we see the hopes and fears of all the years that meet in the Messiah and allow us to live and go in peace. 2020 has been a long and difficult year. I want to thank you for your support to Lord of Life Lutheran Church. We're a congregation that's not been able to congregate, at least not in large numbers. And yet, you have faithfully and generously supported your church through your prayers, your offerings, and your love. Thank you. Thank you for being generous and faithful. May the new year bring us even closer together in spirit and in body. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Lord of Life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. The gospel for this Lord's Day is found in Luke chapter 2. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to thy people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our newborn Savior Jesus Christ, in whose name we say, Amen. The beginning of that gospel might have sounded a little familiar. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. I remember as a child the old, old red hymnal, the SBH, service book and hymnal, page 15 for setting one. This was part of our nunc dimittis, which means now dismissed. And it meant the service was almost over. 
I remember perking up at this point. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. These words are directly from Luke chapter 2, and they are the words of Simeon. Now, Simeon is an old man by all accounts in our scripture. We are not told how old, but we assume could have been even up in his 80s, which would have been unusual in those days. And he'd been promised by God, we understand, to not die until he saw the Savior of the world, until he saw firsthand the Messiah. We aren't told how he arranged this deal with God, but we are told that he is devout and righteous. We are told that the Holy Spirit was upon him, and the Holy Spirit had told him that he would not die until he saw his Lord. So he waited and waited. And he waited at the temple. Where else would you wait to find the Savior of the Lord? I have to do that paragraph again. So he waited. And he waited. And he waited. Simeon waited at the temple. Where else would you go to wait for the Savior of the world? He takes one look at Jesus when his parents come forward, and he knows. He has not waited in vain. He takes the child from Mary into his own arms and he blesses God. Mine eyes have seen the salvation of the world, the light to the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people Israel. What an utterance. Well, we are waiting. We are at church, in a way, at our temple, if you will, and we are expecting. How much more are we like Simeon? Are we righteous, devout? touched by the Holy Spirit? We will look with open eyes and heart to the coming of God into the world. Are we desperate for our Lord to come? No, that's not right, but we certainly are hopeful, filled with hope that our Lord is coming and none too soon. We have just celebrated Christmas. We've just celebrated his coming into the world, and we anticipate again his coming again and again. But unlike Simeon, I don't wish to depart right after his arrival. I wish to live in a world where God reigns. What a world that will be. What a promise God has made to us. What a promise he has made to Simeon. Mine eyes have seen the salvation of the world. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. We pray that prayer as well. In the meantime... We will take all the peace you can offer us as we wait. Amen. Let us rejoice in proclaiming our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our response today to the prayers of intercession is, Your mercy is great. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Refresh those whose calling it is to serve your church in public ministry. Today we pray for the Congregation of Spirit of Grace Lutheran Church in Surprise and their pastor Scott Hackler, Pastor Gary Benson, and their lay leadership. Empower them in their ministry and their work for the sake of the gospel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O oh God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those who need in are in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across all generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and every place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you've opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal, May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, the Word made flesh, given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Poverty born, the 
slumbered for two thousand years A promise that silenced a thousand fears A faith that can hobble an ocean of tears The peace of Christmas Day The branch that bears the bright holly The dove that rests in shines for all to see the peace of Christmas Day. Out of the green that people they bear, total the strife and the troubles and care, put them in cows and leave them right there, the peace of Christmas Day. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>